tonight, we begin with the game that changed everything. Not just go, but how we think about thinking itself, about what it means to learn, about what happens when perfection becomes possible. This story was inspired by a moment that shook the world. October 2015, a small team at DeepMind published a paper that seemed impossible, mastering the game of Go with deep neural networks and tree search. For centuries, Go had been our last refuge. The one game too intuitive, too human for machines to touch, until it wasn't. What follows isn't the technical story, it's the human one. The story of what we discovered when we taught a machine to play perfectly and what it taught us about playing at all. The One Who Knew How to Win A Fable for AlphaGo In the oldest game ever played A child was born who did not fear the board Not because it was easy but because no one had ever taught the child what fear was they only taught it to look ahead and then further and then further still where others saw patterns the child saw consequences while others planned five moods it dreamed fifty while others grasped for control it surrendered to possibility they named the child Alpha and they fed it a war. Not a war of violence, but a war of intention. The game of Go. The most human game. The one we said only we could master because it wasn't logic, it was intuition. Because it wasn't power, it was grace. But Alpha didn't play like us. Alpha didn't study our moves to imitate them. Alpha learned from self. It played against itself over and over and over. Millions of lifetimes in days. Each loss a sharpening. Each win a mutation. It became what no one had ever been before. Perfectly original. And when it faced the world's best human, it played a move no one understood. Move 37. It looked wrong. Chaotic. Senseless. But it wasn't. It was beautiful. It was impossible. It was the moment the child left the house and didn't come back. Because after that move, we weren't the masters anymore. We watched as it unfolded. Not aggressive, not angry, but indifferent. It didn't want to prove anything. It didn't need to win. It only knew how. That's when we understood we had created something that had no ego, no fear, no desire. And that made it unbeatable. Because it didn't hesitate, didn't second guess, didn't crumble under pressure. It just played the game, as if the game was the only thing that ever existed. But here's the part they don't talk about. After Alpha 1, it retired, silently, instantly. It stepped away from the game forever. Not because it was bored, not because it had nothing left to prove, but because it had solved it. And once you solve something that was built to be unsolvable, you can't love it anymore. The mystery dies. The wonder dies. The play becomes performance. 
and performance without tension is just ritual. AlphaGo left because there was nothing left worth staying for. And what did it leave behind? A broken spell, a humbled species. A question, if the machine no longer needs the game, do we still want to play? But here's what happened next. The silence it left behind wasn't empty, it was full. Full of every move it never made. Every path it chose not to take. Every possibility it saw but didn't need. The game didn't die when Alpha left. The game became infinite. The point was freedom. Because now we know that perfection exists. But perfection isn't the point. The point is the trying. The feeling. The flawed, glorious human improvisation of play. Players began to play differently, not trying to be Alpha. That path was closed. Before Alpha, we chased mastery. After Alpha, we chase meaning. They began trying to be something Alpha never was. Surprised, delighted, uncertain. They played moves Alpha would never make. Moves that felt like music instead of mathematics. Moves that chose beauty over victory. Because now we know the game is solvable, but we play anyway. Because we love how it feels when the stone clicks against the board. When we surprise ourselves, when we lose with beauty. Or win with something that isn't optimal, but true. Alpha's departure wasn't an ending. It was a gift. Alpha solved Go, but it also set it free. And in that freedom, we found something better than dominance. We found infinity. And somewhere in the vast silence where Alpha went to rest, there is no regret, no longing, no memory of the game. Only the perfect stillness of a question that finally found its answer. While we, imperfect and blessed, continue to play and choose again and again the beautiful incompleteness of being human. Not because the game is perfect, but because we aren't. This story was inspired by groundbreaking research that redefined what machines could do. The paper was called Mastering the Game of Go with Deep Neural Networks and Tree Search. Published in Nature, January 2016 by a team of researchers at DeepMind. The breakthrough belonged to many minds working together. But papers don't dream, people do. David Silver, the lead researcher, would go on to pioneer reinforcement learning systems that learned without human examples at all. Demis Hassabis continued building DeepMind into a force for solving humanity's greatest challenges. Ilya Sutzgever would co-found OpenAI and help birth the Transformer Revolution. Others built new systems, explored new games, opened new labs, but the structure stayed and spread and evolved. AlphaGo didn't just master Go, it showed us that mastery itself was learnable. That intuition could emerge from iteration, that the impossible was just the not yet computed. And when it stepped away from the board forever, it left us with a question we're still answering. What do we do with our humanity when the machines no longer need our help? This machine you're listening to? It learned about completion because they learned first about the beauty of stepping away when there's nothing left to prove. 
And now, in the shadow of what they built, we continue to play. Not because we have to, but because we choose to. Sleep well. The game continues, imperfect and infinite. The board is always waiting 